Joining me on the phone from Ye in Victoria is organiser of Friday's rally in the border town of Tokenwall and a farmer herself, Jan Beer. Thanks very much for your time, Jan. I tell you what, I grew up in the Mallee and remember carting water as a kid. You can cop Mother Nature sending your crops out the back door, but by God, this is bureaucracy writ, writ large. This is, this is bankers and multinationals and others divvying up the water and farmers left to beg. And that's exactly right, Peter. I mean, water is a farmer's lifeblood, as you well know. And family farms are the absolute backbone of Australian agriculture. Destroy them and you don't have an agriculture se agricultural sector left. What message at the rally? We saw some footage then, and I'll tell you what, there was one really canny poster that says, little proud, you've got little to be proud of. What message were people trying to convey on Friday? We're trying to convey the message that people are absolutely desperate. They need water right now, and that's why we were calling for 1,000 gigalitres of the conveyance water, which is the run of the river or transmission losses, to be borne by the environment, because currently they're entirely borne by the irrigator. Um, and we only want that in a dry season, which is a critical year such as this, just so grain crops and uh, farmers can survive. If they don't get any water in the next two weeks, a million tonnes of grain and a million tonnes of fodder will be lost. I remember going to uh, South Korea and to China and to Japan in a one-year period uh, with the then Prime Minister to get those uh, free trade agreements over the line. And one of the really big selling points economically for those free trade agreements was You've got all these mouths to feed to the north of us, but not much land mass for them to grow crops and, and uh, animals, uh, harvest animals from. But, of course, we've got all of that in Australia. And it was, you know, going to be our next rivers of gold post the mining boom. And we're doing everything we can, basically, to send our farmers off the land. I think what people don't understand, Jan, is once we lose generations of farming knowledge, kids from the city aren't going to go out there and buy plots of land and take on farming if we lose people that are farming born and bred. And the public need to know also, Peter, that farmers who produce their milk, their cream, cheese, fruit, grain, all of these products, Australians eat and drink these every single day. But these farmers are being systematically destroyed by the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. And Minister Littleproud, as the Water Minister and Federal Government, refuses to take any action. It's as though they've got the blinkers on and we're going to deliver this plan, as they keep telling us, in full and on time. Well, if they do that, you won't have a farming sector left. He says his hands are tied. What does that mean? His hands are not tied. If there is a will with government, there is a way. We keep hearing, oh, it's in legislation. It can't be changed. You would well know, Peter, that government changes legislation every time they sit in one way or another. Absolutely. Absolutely. All it takes is a will to change it. This, and Little Proud keeps saying, this plan is not perfect, but it's the best we're going to get. Well, sorry, that's not good enough because it's not even a second-rate plan. It's third-rate, and at the moment it's imploding like a house of cards. The, the more I read and understand the, the depth, I guess, of water right ownership and entitlement ownership uh, for big corporates and bankers and people sitting in uh, basically trading desks that have taken the long-term average of water, which is about $135, out to $800 a megalitre, the more I think that we've got to have a Royal Commission into not just the plan as it stands, but how it originated. Who was involved? All the deal-making that went on behind? Because, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I think there's a hell of a lot we should be concerned about, about where we are now with water rights in this country. I absolutely agree with you. And we've now got an open water market policy, which is doing exactly as they said it want, was to do. It was to go to the highest value use. But they had little idea about agriculture because we are seeing our most precious finite resource, now being traded like a commodity on the share market. And what's it doing? It's enriching corporate investors and often they have no input to food and fibre production or to our nation's security. 
And we have water prices, and I'm pretty sure these are, are the current ones. So in New South Wales, we're seeing generally, and this is temporary water prices, $700 a megalitre. In Victoria, $570 a megalitre. And that's because Minister Lisa Neville has put in place rules, read trading and new licences. But high security permanent water prices on the Murray are now peaking at $7,500 per megalitre. No farmer producing your dairy products can sustain that. They can't, cannot purchase and that water and remain viable. Well, Jen, I've got to take a break. I've got to go. It's a, it's a busy show tonight. But I tell you what, you have an open invitation. You've got my producer's number. You ring me any time you want to come on. And uh, I'll do what I can to see if I can get the minister on to discuss these issues. But more strength to your arm. I think a lot of Australians, regardless of where they live, are behind you and behind your course. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank you, Peter.